I am Augustine. Augustine. I am the Bishop of Hippo. It was not always so. I was a very bad young man, very evil young man. My life given much to evil. But my mother, Monica, she prayed much for me. And after much struggle, I come to Jesu, to Jesus, the Christ. Now he is my savior, and now I follow him. But there was much struggle because of much thinking, even after I follow him. I wish with you to share a homily, a sermon. It is taken from the book of John. John, in the very first chapter, in the very first Verse, John chapter 1 and verse 1. This we shall be uh, speaking tonight about. But what is it that, that, that I want? What is it that I desire? Why do I give sermons? Why do I come to my cathedral, to my church? What is the purpose of my life? My only purpose is that we should live together with Christ. We should be one with him. This is my desire. This is my honor. This is my riches. It is, it is my joy. It is my glory for us to be one with Jesus Christ. If you do not listen to me, since I have not kept silent, I have saved my soul because I have done what he wished for me to do. But I do not wish to be saved without you. I am here for you. I am here to share the love of Jesus the Christ with you. And so we must hear the word in our hearts. And this word, it is by this we shall be remade. It is this word that will bring us to the word. There is only one teacher. There is only one teacher who is incorruptible, truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so Jesus Christ, he is the only incorruptible teacher. He is the truth. And he is the only, the only interior teacher who has become exterior teacher in order that he can recall the the exterior realities uh, to interior realities. He, he came here, became flesh to, to dwell among us here upon the earth, to bring what was in heaven down to us, to bring that which is outward to the inward, the interior realities. He took the form of a slave. He took the form of a man. And he, he deigned to show himself as lowly as ourselves. He deigned to take on that which is corruptible, him who was incorruptible. He wished to show himself to those who are fallen. He wished to show himself to those who are fallen so low that his sublimity could be known only by those who are rising. In the church, those who are united in the truth, they speak the truth. In the church, those who are united, who speak the truth, they by which all things were made, the truth, the truth is of the word made flesh, and he dwelt among us. The truth is Christ born of God, one from a one, the only and co-eternal son. Truth. Truth is in the form of a slave. Truth is born of Mary. Truth is in the passion. Truth is in the crucifixion. Truth is in the resurrection. Truth is the ascension. It is always truth that can be grasped. It is Christ himself. He would say to you that I am the food for grown men. Grow and you shall feed upon him. Grow, and he said, I am the bread. 
This is my body which is broken for you. Grow and you shall take upon him. You will not change him into yourself. But as you grow in him, you will grow into himself. You will become more like him. And so we turn to our study, to our uh, homily, our passage. John wrote by the moving of the Holy Spirit, the Spiritus Sancto. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so this, as we consider what we have heard, Paul tells us in his book of the 1 Corinthians that the natural man does not understand that which is of the Spirit of God. And realizing that it is his present congregation in, of church members, there are necessity, natural men, there are those I know who hear me who do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. They are not one with him. And I speak to you. There are many natural men who think according to the flesh. There are many natural men who are not capable of rising to spiritual understanding. And my hesitation to you, it is great because I think for you I am giving this. For you it will be a burden for you because you will hear the truth. And so I think, should I, should I not speak? No, I, I, I cannot not speak. I must speak the truth to you. I must share this truth with you. But my hesitation is great because how can I, a man, declare the goodness, the greatness, the glory of God himself? How can I explain properly what is in the gospel? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. For there are those who will not understand. But should I should keep silent because you will not understand? No, no, I cannot. I cannot. I must explain to the best of my feeble tongue. So since I do not doubt that there are among, those among you who cannot only understand the explanation, but the passage itself before it is explained, there are those who have the Spirit dwelling within them, those who will understand, but I will share. Finally, perhaps the mercy of God will assist us so that we may be satisfied satisfied and each one receive what he can. And since he who speaks also says what he can, for who can say what is actually the case? My brothers, I am not certain that even John himself, when he wrote these words, understood what actually is the case. But he said it. He said what he could. He said what he was moved to write. And he was inspired by God, but still he is a man. This John, my very dear brothers, was one of those mountains upon which it is written, let the mountains receive peace for your people and the hills justice. Psalm, this is written, the 71st Psalm. The mountains, they are great souls, and the hills are ordinary souls. But the mountains receive peace that the hills may receive justice. And what is the justice that the hills receive? What is the justice that those of us who are ordinary souls that we receive, what is this justice? It is faith. It is faith because the just man lives by faith. The book of Hebrews tells us this. Romans tells us this. For ordinary souls would not receive faith unless the great souls called mountains were enlightened by wisdom itself so that they might transmit to the little ones, the small ones, yes, the hills, <laughs> the little ones what they can understand. And so the hills live by faith because the mountains receive peace. By these mountains, it has been said to the church, these mountains have not separated themselves against the one from whom they have received peace, so they may announce peace truly and not hypocritically. There are those who receive peace to announce to the people that they have contemplated, they have thought upon wisdom, insofar it is possible for a human to understand, to attain what the eye has not seen, what the ear has not heard, what has not entered into the heart of man. Again, the apostle, he writes in 1 Corinthians. But if wisdom has not entered into the heart of man, how did it enter into the heart of John?